If you haven't seen my video about Polypop yet, I highly recommend you go watch it. In that video, I give you an explanation of most of the things that Polypop can do. But the basic summary is Polypop is OBS Studio, but in 3D. So working in a 3D environment allows you to do all sorts of wild stuff. Instead of just being able to add a filter to a 2D plane, you can now import 3D objects use 2D captures as textures. You can make objects collide. You can use objects as particle emitters. But that's not all. On top of working in a 3D environment, Polypop surprisingly has amazing features that are connected to your Twitch account. For example, allowing you to control your alerts, your channel points and things like that so that you can link stuff together. You want your camera to do a backflip every time someone redeems a specific channel reward? Just link them together. You want a beach ball to bounce over the screen every time someone types exclamation mark beach ball? <laughs> you can do that. And certain objects will have specific properties. For example, there's dice. And in order to roll them, of course, someone can type something in chat, redeem a channel point, uh, trigger an alert. You can even have a keyboard shortcut to just roll the dice on screen. But the cool thing is that you have access to the outcome of the dice. So depending on what they actually roll, you can trigger even more stuff. So in my stream, what I have is a channel point. I think for 100 points, you can roll the dice. And if you hit a specific outcome, in my case, it's going to be 12. Um, there's going to be a burst of gold coins on screen with a sound alert. And this is what I'm going to teach you how to do. It is a very simple process, but I do want to take my time to help you grasp all the possibilities that Polypop gives you. If you're wondering, wait, I thought that was in OBS Studio. I do use Polypop in, 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 in relation, in conjunction with OBS Studio. Anyways, I'm hyped for this tutorial. But before we start, a quick message from our sponsor. Own is a website that will provide you with everything you need to customize your Twitch channel or even your YouTube channel. You'll get banners, panels, offline images, stream overlays, even pre-made animated emotes. Or you don't like pre-made? That's fine. They have a custom emote maker. You customize one emote and then own just generates the rest. So for all your needs, camera overlay, labels bar, transitions, check out own.gg slash gal level. That is O-W-N-3-D.gg slash gal level. So this is Polypop. A quick reminder that it is completely free to download. Just go to their website, download, install it, and start tinkering with it. Again, they also have like an amazing tutorial that I, I advise you going through thoroughly before you start actually using it because it's going to show you the basics and you're going to be good to go. Any ways. So basically what I have here is a couple of 3D stuff. So this is going to be a coin emitter. So this is what happens when you roll a 12 on my live stream, right? You have a burst and of course it's on top of whatever I'm streaming. Okay. So I've created an empty scene here just to show you step by step. I want to show you two different ways to make it happen. And uh, it's basically, I found the hard way to make it. And then I found the easy way, except I'm still on the hard way. The cool thing with Potty Pop is that you have the ability to manually link stuff together, right? So first of all, let's add a pair of dice. Let's uh, click on the plus here on the scene layout. Let's go to 3D objects. And you even have a D10 or a D20 dice if you want to. But if you click on this one, Twitch, there's something called Twitch Dice Game. So you can click add. And immediately it will open up a little bit of a tutorial. Let's quickly review how this mini game works. All right, you can press escape anytime to exit the explainer. The dice mini game scene uses your connected Twitch account to get the list of all users in your channel's chat room. Whenever you play a round, the game will select a random user, roll the dice, and if the roll contains a pair of the same number, that user wins. You can start using play dice round hotkey. In this case, you know, it's control space bar. Lastly, you can tweak the look of the game by changing the properties of its various elements in the scene layout. So this is basically a preset. This is the, the easiest way that you can already have already have a dice game just ready to go. And as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff here um, where it will show like the player name. Um, and if they got like a pair or whatever, it will say you got a pair. It can say no luck if you didn't get a pair. Let's pick a player and let, let me show you basically. So I would have to go to library if I want to have a look at my dice round, whatever. So it added a hotkey. Those are things that you can add individually, right? So let's press control space and see what happens. Boom. So it picks a player. There's timers and all that. This is all automatic, basically. Basically, basically this is automatic. This is with 
Boom, I guess that's someone that was in my chat. It rolls the dice and this is not a pair, so it's gonna say no luck. Now I just realized there's three ways of doing it. This is like the easiest. This is number one. You just click, you add roll dice, boom, your st stuff is ready. You can add it in your OBS, right? I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna show you the hardest way, the way that I did it. I'm deleting the scene by clicking on it, pressing minus, and here I'm gonna add scene layout, okay? This time I went into game and I added dice, okay? So now it only adds this 3D object, which is dice that I can roll by clicking roll dice, right? And as you can see here, I have a couple of options. I have active, that means if I wanna turn them off or on, those are things that I can link to other stuff later. I have, uh, of course, the color if I want to. I usually keep it purple, you know, that color scheme, the size and everything basically. And then I have the outcomes. So outcome one, two, three, and then I have alerts for outcomes so if there's no outcome or any outcome you can do stuff and you can test them so right now what we want is something to trigger the rolling the dice basically we want something to activate the dice roll them do something if there's the outcome that we want and then i don't know 10 seconds later turn them off right and you can do this by just linking stuff let me show you you see those things you can link stuff with them so on the library here i went to twitch and i created a new channel point reward right so i'm gonna click here and this is gonna be uh, my twitch alerts right and under channel points i could press plus if you don't see it you press plus it will add one you can go there and go click under custom reward this is where you will find it those are all of my all of my rewards so let's keep it on roll the dice i need to remember to delete this later and on redeemed you can do this right so when i redeem this when someone redeems it i want it remember I wanted to activate this. So I'm going to drag it to active and it's going to tell me you want to turn it on, turn it off or to toggle on and off. We wanted to turn it on, right? I also wanted to roll the dice. Boom. So now if I don't do anything and I just test the redeem, if someone redeems it in my chat right now, it will do this. Of course, it was already on. It was never turned off, but we're going we're, we're, we're to talk about this later. All right. Now to turn it off. How do we turn it off after 10 seconds? Because it can't just stay on screen the whole time, right? I'm going to click plus here in my library and I'm going to add a countdown. So you see this countdown alert. You click boom and then you can set the time. We're going to put it to five seconds just because I want this to to be fast. And now you can see this is like a countdown tick. So every time it goes down one, two, three, four, five, basically per second, you can actually have an action that happens every second. But this is not the case here. When the countdown ends, we want this to turn off, right? So we're going to drag it to active and it's going to be like, you want to set it off, set to off. But here's the tricky part. We want the countdown to be triggered, right? So let me go back. So I have my two thingies here. Just look for the countdown alert. Hopefully that was number three. Yes, it was. So now I can make it so that when I redeem the channel point, I hover over this. It brings me to the countdown alert and it resets the timer. So it starts it, right? It resets it. It goes back to five and then four, three, two, one, zero turns off the whole thing. Now, when I hover over this, it will tell me, hey, you have it linked. If I hover over this, it's gonna tell me, hey, you have it linked on redeem. So right now, when someone redeems the channel point, it's going to activate the dice, roll the dice, wait five seconds, and then turn off the dice. Let's test it. Let's go back to Twitch alerts, go back to our custom stuff, and let's click, okay? Boom turns it off, that's it. So the same thing, for example, if I want particle burst on an outcome, I can just do, um, I can just, just go find whatever 3D object, for example. I did the gold coin on my stream, you can use whatever you want. Let's use this star here, and you can add as a object emitter. That makes it, turns it into a particle, basically. And here you can click emit burst, and this is what it looks like originally, but I'm gonna modify a little bit. Of course, I want it to be small. I want more particles. I want them to bounce around. I don't need to show you all of that. Uh, watch my other video about it. Okay, so for particle burst, it's actually easy to program it like fading out, so not staying on screen forever with uh, lifetime. So right now it's infinite. We're just gonna set it to, is that seconds? One second, boom, 
and then disappears. I'm doing this just for the tutorial, right? So now we just want the emit burst to be linked to the outcome, right? So we can choose the outcome one, for example, here on the on the dice. And it's going to be if there is a pair of six, right? If there's a pair of six um, outcome one on outcome one, I'm going to drag this, put it on my star and then go to emit burst. So and then that's it. That's what I did. Right. And this is the complicated way of doing because I, I guess I really love the the like the dragging and dropping little little cables like that. But here, let's do testing outcome one. And it's going to do the emit burst. It's kind of hard to test the whole thing because you would have to roll until you roll um, a full 12. But if we test the reward, it rolls the dice. I guess an easier way would be like outcome one would be oh no, actually any outcome. So from here, disconnect this and then star. Remember, we wanted emit burst. We wanted to be on any outcome. So drag on any outcome. This is just for testing. You wouldn't want just every outcome to have a, a particle burst. There you go. So now if I test the whole thing, whatever it finds, it's going to emit the star. Boom. Dice stays for five seconds. Uh, star stays for one second and, and that's it. OK, now I want to delete all of this. <laughs> I want to delete everything and I'm going to start over to, to show you. I also need to delete everything in here just to make sure I don't get too confused. We're just going to keep the custom reward. So it's just Twitch alert and then custom reward right in here. We're going to add our dice. So game dice add modified the way you want whatever let's go with teal this time okay cool and we know that we can roll the dice nice we wanted to activate roll the dice fade out or just turn off deactivate if you will so so we have our dice and we have our um channel point so from here we can actually control it immediately <laughs> pretty much let me show you so if you go to unredeemed after picking, you know, your correct channel point redeem here on redeemed, you can drag and something that I never noticed is up top. There's something called action sequence, and this is the solution to all of my problems. So I'm going to click plus here and it's going to give me options. There's weight, so we don't need a countdown anymore with the whole weight thing. Uh, emit alerts so it can trigger certain things and then stop other instances. So if there's something going on, you can stop it. So let's click emit alert and that alert would be turn on the dice. OK. But also roll the dice. Cool. Plus wait for five seconds and then emit alert. Turn it off. Shut it off. Set to off. Boom. So right now, if I test, rolls the dice, turns them on, rolls the dice five seconds in. Boom, no more dice. Super easy. <laughs> so if we add our particle burst, clicking plus, going to 3D, uh, 3D objects, sorry. By this time, we got some V-Bucks. Add as emitter. Let's test it. Yeah, whatever. So now all you have to do is set up the outcome by clicking on the dice here. Of course, outcome, um, any outcome, for example, you would want outcome one and then set your actual outcomes. But you, you get it. You get the point. You get the point and go to the V box and emit. Boom. And that's it. Now, if we go back to our library and actually redeem the channel point. Boom, V box. <laughs> And that's it. So now on my other tutorial, I basically showed you how to add that to OBS Studio. There's a little there's a little thingy thing to go there, but it's basically let me see if I can show you. So in order to add Potty Pop to OBS Studio with the transparency, what you'll need to do is add a video capture device. We're going to call this one Potty. OK, click OK. I'm going to deactivate it so you don't see all the random stuff. So I have snap camera and Potty Pop camera will pop up here. So you can see it's already showing. Um, and in here, there's like a little finicky thing to do is go to custom and then pick your resolution that you want. You have set of 720p and under video format, you have to go with ARGB and th this should give us transparency. So as you can see here, boom, let's click. And if I turn it on, it should appear on top of everything. Let me enable preview to see. Yep. So that works off preview again. So if I go back to Polly Pop, for example, and I want to test something, it should probably show up just rolling the dice. 
I forgot to turn off the V-Bucks, <laughs> but in that case, that helps us. Remember, lifetime for the V-Bucks, we can just put it, set it to about one second, and some of them should disappear. Never mind. Let's go back, test it. <laughs> Boom. V-Bucks, disappear, disappear. Easy clap. Hey, editor guy level here. I completely forgot to record the sound part in that tutorial. So what you want to do in your scene layout is click on plus, go to, you know, 2D, it's gonna be sound, you click add. Okay, it's gonna bring up your library. If you already imported sounds, they're gonna appear here. If you haven't, you can just click plus, import audio clip, boom, and then you can pick one. That's one says kids, wah. Boom, click open. You can uh, put it on the loop if you want to. Please do not do that because it's just going to play forever. Click OK. And now you have, you know, the same actions like play, stop. And in this case, we just want our dice, right? Remember the outcome. So on outcome one, you can just drag this. Let's put outcome three just to show you. On outcome three, I want to hover over the kids playing the kids, whatever the sound is, and then click play and it will basically play it. Now here's the thing, it actually plays it in Polypop. So if you want to hear it, you actually have to activate the monitor here. So if I click here once, it's gonna be green. That means monitor is activated and it's probably gonna be super loud. I apologize in advance. And there you go. So now when you roll the dice, when someone redeems it and it gets on the outcome number three, it's going to play the sound or if it's outcome number one, whatever. That's it. <laughs> so I know this might seem complicated at first sight. The, the My advice is use the last method. Use that action sequencer because it's just so easier to link stuff together. I just wanted to really take my time and show you all the possibilities and all the different ways that you can come to the same conclusion basically with Polypop. Uh, I've seen some people basically create full games with Polypop because there's so much interaction between the software and everything you can do with Twitch chat, channel points, and, and uh, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. In my previous video, which was a sponsored video, I said, oh, okay, this is a sponsored video, but I'm definitely going to be using it. I am still using it. They have options where you can pick out like viewers and you can even show their profile pictures and stuff like that. You can show like um, recent subs in their profile pictures. In my case, a lot of people are streamers, so that's like a cool way of showcasing. If you're doing like giveaways rolling the dice might be a good way of doing like giveaways hey if you roll this you win it's there's a lot to go through i will probably make a quicker version of how to set up the whole roll the dice thing the way i did but hopefully you guys enjoy this video and if you want to see more polypop tutorials please 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 let me know let me know i'm actually excited to get more stuff done with polypop in the meantime if you're looking for some dope overlays go to gumroad.com slash get level thank you so much for watching this video and uh, follow me on twitch guess what yes i stream on twitch i stream on twitch <laughs> anyways thank you again for watching i will see you guys next time go out there make me proud get level out